Hi everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you are. Today we are back again with yet another project spotlight series or OWASP project spotlight series project that's called Vulnerable App. That's interestingly the name itself says Vulnerable App, which is very popular these days because uh, it actually talks about multiple aspects of vulnerabilities and. I will let Karan Preet, who is actually the project leader, talk about it more and uh, introduce himself as well. Over to you, Karan. Um, hi, Vana. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me here. Um, really uh, excited to be part of the Spotlight series. So, um, so okay, as, as you suggested, right, as you were telling that, the vulnerable app name itself uh, indicates that it is a vulnerable application. So actually, when you go to someone and say that, okay, this is a, and they will say that, okay, how is this different from, there are so many vulnerable applications in the market, right? Um, under OVASP umbrella also, and even in the market. So they say that, okay, how is this different? So um, actually the difference is the target audience. So in general, if you look at um, any uh, vulnerable application, general vulnerable applications, they are targeting uh, students, whereas the, uh, vulnerable app uh, targets automated scanners, DAS tools like OWASP app or SAS tools like um, SonarCube. So, and then generally the generally the question is like, okay, really does uh, is is there that much difference uh, with the target audience? So actually there is. So um, uh, I will give you um, some examples of that. So um, so generally the applications that target students, uh, what they do is that there are something like a challenges. And there is like a gamification where you solve the challenge, you get the uh, something like a token, which you go and put it, put it somewhere and then there's a score co scoreboard and that increases the score and all those things. But whereas the vulnerable application which target scanners behave differently, where what happens is that uh, we give the list of vulnerabilities which the vulnerable app has and then the scanner reports some vulnerability and then they compare between the vulnerabilities. And if, if the scanner is like, if they, they match the vulnerability, that means that scanner is um, doing good or, or maybe not different or, or something of that sort. So that's one of the difference. Another difference uh, is that if we look at any vulnerable application, which uh, target students um, is they will have one or two levels or maybe three levels. And because, the, because their uh, goal is not to cover every payload, which the scanner has, whereas the vulnerable application, which target scanners, their goal is to uh, maybe cover as much payload as they can, right? So there are much, much more levels if you look at it. And another aspect is the human tendency. So like, I will give you an example. So say we go to a user or a, a student will say that, okay, don't trust the user input and do some sanitization. Now, um, I think whether, uh, even if the data is coming in, query parameter is coming in, path parameter is coming in, request, wherever it is coming in, uh, they are able to like uh, handle that. But when it comes to scanners, right, it, it's different um, because we need to like target every portion of that, that the scanner should be able to inject the payload at every place. Uh, it should be able to handle every type of request. Maybe sometimes they don't handle multi-part request or something of that sort. So there are multiple areas. So these these are like these are some of the differences which actually uh, like the, these are the differences between the two. And now, um, okay. So let's. I, I think I can give you brief about the UI. This is the screen of a VASP uh, vulnerable app. And if you look at it, it's like. Uh, a list of vulnerable applications are there, and then you go inside a vulnerable application, and then you see a lot of vulnerabilities there, and then you go inside a vulnerability, say unrestricted file upload, and you will see a lot of levels there. Now, um, now if you go to a level, right, it it has like three parts, which is vulnerability description, practice vulnerability, and hints. And actually, um, and if you look at these levels, you will see that. There are um, unlocked, like these are unlock uh, icons. These are showing that it is a uh, it is unsecure vuln uh, vulnerability vulnerable level. And if it is locked, then this means that this is a secure level. So, and now 
someone uh, now maybe scanners also can go here and uh, fill in some details or maybe uh, upload some files and then try out different payloads and and then maybe able to report it here we are showing the vulnerable description in hint uh, uh, these may be like this was easy to implement so we have implemented uh, maybe if if some some student comes in and wanted to explore maybe more payloads they can come in and try it out um now uh, i will talk about uh, some of the features of um, uh, vulnerable app so um, the first feature is the um, how are we helping the scanners so so uh, the vulnerable application as i earlier told right so it gives the list of vulnerabilities it has so now if you look at it for the sast tools we give a list of like vulnerabilities like okay this is the file and th this is the line where the vulnerability is and this is the number of times it gets cold cold and now what 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 a scanner can do is they can match these with their reports and similarly for dash tools uh, what we do is uh, oh, let me hide this yeah hide floating okay so now if we go to the dash so we also give a uh, an endpoint which is called a scanner endpoint and which gives the details of the vulnerabilities that are present in the vulnerable app like i will give you a better view here so if you look at here then we tell that okay this url has uh, unsecure implementation on a get method and this is the vulnerability that it exposes so now they can match and maybe report it and they this can help them in in multiple ways in they can introduce it in their ci cd pipelines and check how well they are doing and even um, going across going from one release to another it can help them um, and even um, in some scenarios it can uh, even help uh, in comparing various scanners as like a benchmarking tool also now uh, now i i will talk about one of the another benefit of um, uh, vulnerable app that is the ease of writing vulnerability so actually because we like vulnerable app needs to add a lot of uh, vulnerability levels right and because we have to add a lot of vulnerability levels so we want it to be super easy for for the developers of who are writing the vulnerable application like maybe writing the levels uh, super easy for them to write it so what we have done is that it's we have taken a lot of concept from spring boot where it is very well annotation driven and very easy to go and implement it i will give you an example so say let's suppose we someone wants to create a sample uh, vulnerability so what they need to do is that uh, let me so they need to go and they need to just run this Okay. Uh, first of all, I will show that there is no sample vulnerability present here. And if they are like the example is that they are maybe trying to add a new vulnerability, and now what they do is they just need to go and run this uh, command. It will generate some files, and now what they can do is uh, they can just compile this. Um, like they just need to create a Docker image out of it, uh, which is uh, okay. We use a tool called Zip, uh, and they build the docker image so it's yeah till it's it is building i'm just stopping the another uh, the containers so this entire thing is uh, we have generally tried to go to containerization more and therefore this is like a container based setup where there, this is one of the container which um, which which is vulnerable app and then there is a there is another application which we call it as facade application which is like a ui application i am going to give a little glimpse of that what what does it do okay so application is still uh, coming up um, Yeah, so application is up and now you can see that there is a sample vulnerability that's being added here and what uh, what 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 is being done is that there are some placeholders which users need to fill like okay what is the description of the vulnerability like first of all they need to give a name like okay what is the name of the vulnerability and then they need to give some description about it and and maybe if they want they can give the hint also this is for particularly for the students and then they need to like um, so 
generally what happens is this entire thing is being created from a from a json um uh, what do you say a json based contract and where the where the backend is just sending a json and the the vulnerability uh, like the developers who are writing the vulnerability they just need to implement this portion uh, which is like practice vulnerability other things will be generated from that data so i will give a glimpse of the class how it is so if you go to this so what they need to do is they need to like the one who like someone is implementing here they just need to come here they need to give some description and this description we will show in the ui here and then they need to give a name which we'll showing in the list in the drop down and then what they need to uh, do is they need to whatever uh, under the attack vector they tell this will go under the hint section and 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 then then just they need to this is very similar to how the spring boot works like they have the uh, request mapping and the uh, controller and similarly we also have the similar way and then they just need to come and uh, put in some business logic here um, apart from this uh, like they need to go and add some div here and that div gets displayed here in this portion so it's like very easy for them to implement it adding more levels is quite easy so that that we worked a lot on and this was one of the one of the main features like we wanted to tackle now uh, talking about one another thing which is uh, vulnerable app facade actually i earlier told about a about the ui i will give a little glimpse of what it is so actually the vulnerable app facade is um, so actually if you look at any uh, general vulnerable applications they are written in mono text stacks like one text stack maybe um, maybe node.js and uh, no sql any no sql mongo or maybe uh, java or sql or whichever way so they they are written but uh, what happens is that vulnerabilities like say unrestricted file upload uh, which is which differs from technology to technology whether when you are going from php to jsp to java to to even to the servers nginx or to uh, apache so it differs a lot so actually it is very tough to cover all those and considering we are covering these scanners where scanners have the payload for every uh, tech stack they include a lot of payloads considering all the tech all the text so what we have come up with is a docker based design where we will run something like a component which we call it as vulnerable app facade uh, which is a open resty um, nginx based um, component and then the vulnerable applications written in different different um, tech stacks they can come in and they can register to the vulnerable app facade and the registration would be something like this so they need to come and tell that okay if the request is something of this sort then redirect the uh, the traffic to to their particular vulnerable application and now vulnerable app facade what it does is that if the request from the ui comes in and it finds certain criteria like a url having slash vulnerable app or url having slash some other vulnerable application it will redirect the traffic to that particular vulnerable application and this way we cover a lot of um, a lot of other uh, tech stacks and uh, yeah so that's that's one another uh, thing and actually last uh, feature which i would like to talk about is uh, is in general what happens is whenever a scan rule uh, developer like who is writing the scan rule he adds some payloads the the problem that they face is that once they added the payload there is no way to test that payload because there are no such vulnerable applications present which are as per every payload and what those developers do is they write their own vulnerable applications and because they are not reviewed and they they might be buggy and, and also they are not maintained so what happens is once you change the scan rule after 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 write it um, and and those because they are not maintained so they are uh, they will go away so now what happens is when you modify the same scan rule there might be some regression issues or there might be some other scenarios which there is no way to like handle it so the the way what we wanted to go ahead is like you first write the tests like a, like first write the vulnerable code and then write the scan rule and then break this a uh, vulnerable code using the scan rule and and the vulnerable code will stay with us and we will uh, maintain it and and that uh same vulnerable code will help a lot of people uh, uh from uh, uh from the scanners evaluation to to maybe students also so that's some of the helps that uh, it brings in now um i think at last i would uh, like to talk about the uh the maybe the future aspects so 
because we have uh, bought in this uh, architecture of um, uh, what you say uh, the multiple uh, facade where multiple Docker engines are there and uh, Docker machines are there and uh, you are talking to them and there are multiple tech stacks we can include. So there are uh, actually many other vulnerabilities that we can include in here. Um, like DDoS. DDoS is one of the case where applications generally don't implement because their servers, uh, if they implement the DDoS then uh, or DOS, then what happens is the as and when the vulnerable application goes down, then um, then it there is no way to like the, the if the scanner is running and application goes down, there is no way for the scanners to evaluate how well they have done. So what what we are planning is that something like uh, vulnerable app facade is there, which keeps on uh, doing a heartbeat uh, with the Docker. And if it sees that, okay, it is not up. So then we will spawn another Docker because we can do that and maybe kill the another Docker. So those things we can bring in uh, with this. Um, and maybe going further, we are planning to add more and more vulnerabilities, more and more levels. Um, and because we wanted to like um, cover close to thousand uh, vulnerability levels, which we want to add currently, we are, uh, we are at something close to 150 and we wanted to reach to that level. Um, and because this is my uh, thought is that if if the, um, the we keep on adding the vulnerabilities to the vulnerable app then what will happen is that it will become a bank of vulnerabilities and it is very easy for um, hosting other things like ctfs and all other things so that's uh, that's like a futuristic goal but yeah that can be maybe possible so so yeah that's that's it yeah this is very very interesting and how can actually people contribute to it so uh, the contribution is very easy. They just need to go to uh, the project. There are very clear guidelines on how can you contribute to it. Uh, the readme is very clear. You can um, this. This is one of the way to learn about the project, and then you can go ahead to issues section. And there are many issues which we have added. And in these issues, they are labeled with good first issues. If they can go and um, they can pick in pick it pick them and um, yeah, go ahead with them. And not only if uh, this is like there are many vulnerable um, vulnerable applications, just not Java or uh, because we are tech agnostic, so they can even add their vulnerable applications too under this umbrella and or they can write new vulnerable applications under the umbrella, like maybe in Node.js or any other language, which we have not implemented. And yeah, those are, those are the ways they can implement and you will find a very good documentation. And uh, we have actually uh, worked a lot on uh, writing readme's and uh, documentation. So for every project, uh, you will get a good uh, links and how to start, how to run project. And these all are, we have mentioned them and a clear cut uh, contributing outline guidelines are also there. Yeah, that's a very, very amazing thing. And uh, what I'll do is I will also share these details with more people so that we have more support uh, for this project because this is a totally different and interesting project. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Karan, for joining me today. It was wonderful to have you. And thanks for sharing all the details. Yeah, thank you.